welcome guys. Uh, so in this video, uh, I'm trying to talk about uh, the Riemann Lebesgue lemma, and I will give the proof and uh, discuss some details. Okay, so let's. So this is a very interesting idea in the reader analysis. So I just want to uh, have a quick video on it. <coughs> okay. Okay, so the idea is that uh, right. The idea is that we need to we we want to show that uh, the further transformation uh, on the L one function vanish at an infinity. Okay, so the idea is that uh, so the setting there are two settings. The first setting is that f is L one. So let's focus on the only one dimension. So let's focus on L one in R. Okay, so basically you can view this is just this. So f is uh, the back integral, and uh, it can be uh, its whole integration dx will be uh, less than infinity. Then the right, then we can define a so-called Fourier transformation. Uh, that's using z. Okay, so maybe, or maybe okay, so maybe we use another notation called per c. So per c will be just f of x exponential minus i x per c and a dx. And the fact is that uh, the riemann lebesgue lemma tells us that the limit per c uh, goes to infinity, right? Both positive or negative, then this will turn out to be zero, <coughs> right? So this is the riemann lebesgue lemma, and this will definitely show the famous results that cosine omega x dx will turn out to be zero if omega goes to infinity. Also, it's the same for psi x. Psi omega x goes to zero as omega goes to infinity. Right? To prove it, just that the exponential minus i per c to be cosine per c x minus i psi per c x. Right? It becomes zero, so both real part and imaginary part vanish. <coughs> okay. So this is the first setting, and the second setting is uh, usually much easy to prove. The second setting is that uh, uh, I just say that f is smooth and the compact support. Okay, so this is easier because f is smooth means that f differentiation is also a continuous function in R, and also compact support means that f only uh, like f only alive right so f is non-zero only for a, a, f, a compact region so f is only uh, survive in some compact region and lc becomes zero okay and the uh, same theorem holds so same theorem holds okay so uh, that's basically the idea okay so let's uh, quickly give a proof so for the for the first one, uh, for the second one is very easy. So let's prove the for uh, second one. So we assume that f is continuous, right? So we we say that f is no, sorry, f is smooth, right? So f is smooth. So f is smooth, right? So that means let's say we get the per c x dx, right? And uh, so we know f is smooth, right? So we then do the integration by part. So you get the i per c at prime of x exponential this dx, right? So we just let's say this is uh, dv, right? And this is u. So usually we are u dv equals to u v minus v du. And then we know f is only survive at the compact support. So if you go to infinity, both infinity, this is zero. Okay, so we take f value, we get this. And then this is bounded by one over per c. And the f prime of x dx. Okay, uh, but uh, we know that f is compactly support, and we know that the f is differentiable, right? So this is a continuous function uh, on the real on the OR, right? So that means these terms is bounded, right? Just some some number, some finite number, right? So it becomes zero as per c goes to infinity. Okay, so this is the second, uh, the easiest way to prove the second. So basically, we prove this, right? 
Right, but how about this? Okay, so this is the difficult one. Okay. Uh, so to do this, we need some basic idea of real analysis. So let's uh, quickly say, uh, see what's the idea. Okay, so the idea is that uh, in order to prove something in a real analysis, like something in L1, right, we need to use the fact that the simple function, simple function, right, density in L1. So the idea is that uh, you can create a step, the combination of the step function and it shows, shows that your results works for state function. And then if it's for a step function that everything works, then the, then it works, right? For So for example, idea is that first x to be chi of a, b, x. So this function basically is, means that x only uh, if x belongs to open interval a, b becomes one, then else is zero. Then it's easy to see that uh, this is zero, right? So let's check for this. Right, this is just a, b, right? So this is very easy, just exponential i uh, minus i, b, minus exponential minus a, and uh, minus i is theta, right? So this goes to zero as theta goes to infinity, all right? Because these two are bounded, okay? So we know that, uh, we know the first step that the uh, simple function, uh, sorry, the, the indicator function or basically the step function work. Okay, so that means that means f if f is written as the c i chi a i b i, then by the linearity, right, by, by the linearity of the integral, then the we then the works, right. So the final step is that uh, the final step is trivial, right. So we know that l fun so we know that the step function. Or I should say the step functions, right? So the functions are dense in L1, right? So the idea is that uh, there's a step function g such as f minus g dx is less than epsilon, okay? So, and we know that uh, this theorem works for the all the step function, right? So that means you can find when given any step function, so any step g, right, you can find a large n, right? When when this space is very large, then you get this. Uh, sorry, let's say epsilon. And the reason is just by uh right, this is just the definition of the limit. Right, because we know that now if f is a step function, then everything works. Okay. So the rest is just using this to bound. Just to bound this guy, right? This guy. Okay, so the idea is very uh, simple that uh, we can bound this guy by s minus i plus cx dx is less than f minus g. Uh, let me let me just try step by step. Okay, so it's less than uh, if we take the. Okay, so that's maybe. Right, so we can just write as equals to f minus g exponential i plus x plus g exponential minus i plus x dx, and we take the absolute value. So this guy is less than f minus g exponential i. Uh, we so we can delete this guy, dx, plus absolute value of g, uh, let me see, or oh, maybe we, okay, we don't need this, we just let it, uh, we don't pull our, uh, pull the, okay, okay, so we see that uh, this turn control this turn, and the this turn control this turn, okay, so that means, if you choose epsilon greater than zero, I can already find a step function g such that uh, your f minus g dx is less than epsilon divided by two. And for this step function, I can find the large n right, such that uh, this term is less than epsilon divided by two. So totally for epsilon like greater than zero, uh, we can always proceed this, right? So that means your f, this one, this guy, right? Absolute value can be 
can be arbitrary small arbitrary small so this tells you that the f integration of this per c x dx when theta goes to infinity becomes zero okay so idea is that uh, idea is that uh, in right so let's quickly review so to prove this right so we need to prove that for epsilon greater than zero you can just find the per c which is uh, large enough so this become arbitrary small and the idea is that uh, however I want, right, I can always find a g such that it's already very small, right? But for that g, I can always find such larger per c that uh, this is close to zero. Okay, so this proves the the famous riemann the Beck lemma. Uh, I think riemann the Beck lemma is the first time, uh, is the first uh, non-trivial thing, I think, uh, when I was the undergrads. I think the first year or something, so something, and the people and my professor told me this, uh, especially for this, right? This is very, very astonishing that <laughs> I right? just take cosine omega x dx, and then you always go to zero for omega greater uh, to infinity, and uh, the idea is to prove is that if you we if we just use this second condition, which is much stronger than the first one, then it's easy to prove. But uh, to prove it's indeed worse for L1, then we need to the, we need more uh, analysis results. Okay, so this is my uh, video for the Riemann-Lebesgue lemma, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you guys in the next video.